as fall draws nearer, we start to see a change in the color palette all around us. This is true both in nature as well as in any store you can walk into. Suddenly we're seeing a wide variety of warm tones, reds, oranges, yellows, and all of that. So my interest right now is to see what kind of purple plants and flowers I can add into my garden for some cool tone interest in the nature around me during fall. My name is Nicole and I garden in zone 8A in southeastern North Carolina. So what the plants I have to show you in terms of those cool purple tones are going to be things that I can have here in the fall. So of course they may vary depending on what zone you're in. My intention for this video was to really show you the things that I have in my landscape that boast that purple color. But it turns out that we had a tropical storm come through here yesterday. And with that in mind, a lot of my plants really took a beating and a lot of flower petals went flying. So I'm probably going to do a mix of things in my local garden center, as well as in my yard to show you a very nice variety of what is possible this time of year in terms of purple. So one of the purple flowers that I have in my garden for fall are asters. So that one maybe seems like the most common one to pick for this time of year. Asters are late summer fall bloomers. And these babies, the, the one I have is called Magic Purple. Magic Purple, which is here and here, get from eight to 15 inches tall. So not huge. You can get different varieties of asters and you can also get some other colors besides purple, but purple was what I was after here. Asters do benefit from deadheading. So of course, keep up with that to get more blooms for yourself. They are hardy, I feel like till zone three, it, it's something like that. So they are cold hardy plants, which is fabulous. And they like to be in full sun. They will tolerate some partial shade, which I happen to have right here at this moment. Otherwise I almost never have shade, but asters are awesome. So I am at one of my local nurseries and let's go on the hunt for some purple plants and flowers. is a very well loved plant by many because the foliage colors are just unbeatable. I have not had a ton of success with hookahs in my own garden. I think because I'm mainly so sunny and the heat is super duper intense, but I'm definitely going to try them out in some more shadier spots of my yard as I am building those. You know it's a struggle for me, planting the trees and all the things that I've been doing to create some shade, but hookahs are definitely a purple plant that many of us love. Salvia can be enjoyed by so many people hardy to zone three. Salvia comes in multiple varieties, so sizes and even the colors of the flowers can be quite different, which is awesome. This salvia black and blue is the one that I have in my landscape, which did suffer some from the wind, so that's why we're looking at it here instead but the black and blue is hardy and is going to keep going for me till fall. And then we have this salvia, which is a more of a magenta purple. And so this is called Smoky Jazz, and this one is also so sweet. There are actually way more purple plants than you might think. So this baby that's blooming right here next to me, this is the Macho Murado. So this is Ruelia. This baby is gorgeous. Do you see these? this color purple? This one is a beautiful, beautiful shrub. This one is going to bloom until frost, but it's a little bit more sensitive. This one really likes to be in zone 9, whereas I'm 8A, so I really am not going to put this one into my landscape. This would be something I would have to take in for the winter. And you know, if we don't have to do that extra work of taking the plants in for the winter, all the better. Russian sage is a favorite for a lot of people because this one is hardy to zone four. So Russian sage is a bloomer for the late summer and definitely into fall. And really a lot of people don't even take, uh, clip the ends of the expired flower blooms because the foliage is like a silvery color. And so the stems and the foliage look good even in winter. So Russian sage is very nice.
this Rose of Sharon Dark Lavender Chiffon. This is a Proven Winners one. And these shrubs are going to get pretty tall, like 8 to 12 feet tall. So the blooms on these are going to last probably through the month of September. You know, probably could even get them into October. We'll see. But this is like the cousin of the hibiscus to me, the Rose of Sharon. So, of course, I just love these. These are among my absolute favorite. Petalum or the Chinese fringe flower is like double purple if you will. Well sort of. The leaves have a purplish tint to them and they grow to be very nice hedges or shrubs. I have them large in my yard but they grow like a magenta fringe looking flower and so that's awesome. And they for me I think they bloom a couple of times so they're gonna bloom in the fall and then I think again it's in the spring. Holiest is a gorgeous, gorgeous type of plant with beautiful foliage, like some of the other things that I've talked about. The foliage is what makes the coleus gorgeous. However, it really is an annual. So you can definitely overwinter it or put it into your flower arrangements or pots, but it really isn't going to live as a perennial unless you take it inside for the winter. It really doesn't like the cold. I don't have a lot of coleus in my yard because again, way too much sun and they need a little bit of relief from that. But this gorgeous baby right here, Confetti Garden Times Square, oh my goodness. Just the variety of colors that are on this plant are just stunning. This second coleus right here, I'm not sure what variety it is or what the proper name for it is because there was no tag in it but I also liked it just, this is a little bit more of a, a reddish purple, but mixed in with the lime green leaves, also really beautiful. beauty right here is called Sunny Border Blue Speedwell. So this variety is going to be 18 to 24 inches. It is hardy to zone three. So this variety of Speedwell in particular will bloom from spring through fall. So more purple interest for fall and of course you have a different style flower petal on this one than compared to like the asters or something like that so that's also very cool so speed well right here this purple plant that is blooming right now is called a balloon flower so the balloon flower is a summer bloomer but it is going through its second flush right now and as you can see i have a lot of new babies getting ready to bloom so this one's going to go for a little while longer the balloon flower is hardy to zone three. So again, many of us can enjoy this perennial. The flower bloom, the shape of the flower blooms on this particular plant are one of the things that attracts me. Now this is going to get much larger. This is the, I think this is the second year actually I've had this one over here. These balloon flowers do like full sun. So keep that in mind. This, pur this purple plant right here, 
This is Verbena. So this is Hardy Zone 7 through 11. This is a beautiful ground cover. The flowers are much smaller, more delicate. A lot of people will use these in flower arrangements, have them draping out of pots and that sort of thing. Or if you want to fill a nice piece of your ground, again, great ground cover with the Verbena. So I felt like it was worth mentioning. So I guess in summary, <laughs> <laughs> we have found out there are tons and tons of purple plants, probably way more than we would imagine. I hope this video helped you in some way or maybe gave you some ideas of what you might be able to add into your landscape. Thank you so much for watching as always and happy planting.